Election day is almost here. What you need to know before casting your ballot. That's this week on Nevada Week. Support for Nevada Week is provided by Senator William H. Hernstadt and additional supporting sponsors. Early voting begins on October 17th and runs through October 30th, and election day is Tuesday, November 3rd. Registering to vote can occur now until election day. Regardless, this year's election day will look different from years past. Although in-person voting is offered throughout Nevada, all registered voters can vote by mail. On today's program, we'll talk with local community groups on what voter turnout might look like and what efforts are underway to make sure every Nevadan's voice is heard on Election Day. Plus, we'll discuss what you need to know about registering to vote and casting your ballot this year. Joining us to discuss these efforts are Eric Jung, Director of Civic Engagement at the Asian Community Development Council, Yvette Williams, Caucus Chair for the Clark County Black Caucus, and Maria Nieto, State Coordinator for Mi Familia Vota. Evidence looks positive on where voter turnout might be. We're going to talk about some of the specifics there in just a second. But there are a lot of factors that could potentially limit voter turnout. So I wanted to get a perspective from each one of you. Let's go around our virtual uh, table here. And let's talk about where you think, what projections you think we're going to have for voter turnout. And Eric, let's start with you. So good morning, Kip. Uh, thanks again for having me on the show. And for us, uh, what we witnessed is uh, during the primary, the June 9th primary, the turnout was already unprecedented. For a primary, we have 30 percent and people were lining up for uh, the early vote sites and then for the day of primary. So we believe that according to that kind of enthusiasm and the in-state polling we're seeing uh, from all the different polls, it shows that this one will be unprecedented. And I'm glad that the county, the state also have all the different options from mail-in, from early vote, from dropping off ballot to election day. So I don't want to put a number on it, but I know it's going to be unprecedented. Well, let's not put numbers on it, but let's talk a little bit about what representation in the Asian American Pacific Islander community has been. Usually it's, it's underrepresented. It's a small portion of our overall uh, registered voters and our voting turnout, uh, mm -hmm. but it has trended upwards. Um, yep. Do you think that, do you, do you feel that that trend will at least improve on where we were in 2016, which I'm looking at the numbers was 43%. So for comparing, so the last one that we had was a 2018 midterm election between 2014 midterm to 2018 midterm, the Asian Pacific Islander turnout here in Nevada for during early vote itself is 216 percent increase so that's midterm to midterm so from 2016 to 2020 we believe that number will increase hopefully by 150 percent at least so we're looking hopefully getting that uh to again unprecedented number for our communities yeah it's very encouraging especially for a, a midterm election where usually voter turnout is not uh the same uh equitable to what we usually see in a, a presidential year Yvette, let, let's get your perspective on this too. Where, where do you where do you see uh, voter turnout in twenty twenty? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, you know, we we saw during the primary um, uh, a double the number of what we saw in two thousand sixteen primary for presidential election. So I think that is a good indication that we'll see at least double what we saw in the general election in two thousand sixteen. I think with the melon ballots, uh, I think it offered uh, a more equitable opportunity for voters to vote. Um, and so I think uh, voters uh, who were registered actually um, utilized that, that option at, at a much higher rate. Um, our, our biggest concern with that is um, with all that has gone on politically around the post office and ballots getting you know, mail just being delivered on time. Um, there is a lot of um, anxiety within the community uh, around will my will my ballot count? Um, and then the other, of course, biggest thing that people are most concerned about is, um, you know, is will on election day, 
um, will the will whoever wins on election day um, basically call themselves the winner when we haven't even uh, counted the the mass majority of those ballots cast. And so what we're trying to do as a strategy is to encourage our community to actually drop their ballots off. There are a lot of um, early vote sites, um, a lot of um, that you can go to and actually drop your, your ballot off. And so we're trying to encourage folks to go and drop their ballot off if you have any hesitation at all and actually ask um, 10 people that you know um, if you can drop their ballot off for them, um, because we are allowed to drop off uh, ballots uh, on election day. So um, that's kind of the strategy we're trying to use to try to help people feel a little more comfortable um, about um, voting. But we're expecting to see uh, a, a huge turnout that we've, we've not seen before. And um, as far as the Asian population, just wanted to say that we've actually seen the largest increase in registration in our Asian community. They're eight percent now of our of our, our of our uh, registered voters in the state. So, congratulations to the work you've all been doing there. A, a huge increase, yeah, and that should be congratulated for sure. Maria, I wanted to get your perspective too. You've brought up some 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 great points here. Is that there's more diversity, Eric, as well? More diversity in how. Uh, voting can happen, which might be leading to hopefully a larger turnout, but yet there is some concern on the voting process itself. Tell us a little bit about what you're seeing in the Latinx community here. Yeah, of course. Um, so something that we've definitely been seeing in the Latinx community is like they're very grateful that vote by mail is now a thing for everybody, and it's something that we don't have to ask for, something that they don't have to ask for. Um, I think that that has been the biggest challenge is you know, how do I fill out like something that I've never done before? And here at Mi Familia Vota, we also help people with the citizenship process. So we're having new citizens come to us to register to vote for the first time, being like, this is going to be my first election. It's a monumental election. Like, I want to make sure I'm showing up. I want to make sure my family's showing up. So it's also like being able to have those options as well as of, do you want to, you know, mail your ballot or do you want to drop it off? And it's just like, you know, sitting with them and having, and if I sit down with one person, I know that one person is going to sit down with the rest of their eligible voting family and being like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm expecting you to meet me at my house, 10 a.m., dropping off our ballots. <laughs> and I think like it's the enthusiasm that like really just gets to me. Like, I'm like, yes, like I, I love seeing this. So I really think that, and I know the Latinx community is going to be one of the biggest voting blocks in this 2020 uh, election. So, you know, there's also that fear of COVID. Like some people want to have that experience of like voting in person is just like, but they're still in, you know, compromise. So, like they're thinking, how can I have that first voting election? And also being able to talk to them like, you know, you're still having this um, experience and it might be in a different way, but we've all have had to adapt due to COVID. Like we're having this virtual round table and it you know like thank you so much for the invite of course um so a lot of people are concerned about like if they're if there's something wrong with their ballot like if their signature doesn't match like how are they going to be able to know and it's also educating them that like if you if you check and you're registered online and it will show you which signature like you use and which signature it will be matched to and I think that that's the biggest thing too. And something that we've been seeing with our elder community is like, folks don't know how to work the internet sometimes. They don't, they didn't know how to check their own um, voter registration. So that's something that we've been doing is like, we can also do that for them, like making sure we're accessible to the community and we're meeting the community where they're at so that they can also go out and vote. Uh, because okay. of all that education outreach you're doing and kind of what you're seeing in the community here, it seems like a little bit of a, a higher comfortability with voting itself. Uh, what's your projection? You know, we, we've seen some increased numbers also in the Latinx community in Nevada as well. Do we think that, do you think that that is going to continue as a trend here in 2020? I honestly think it is, even though uh, paper registration, the deadline was on the 6th, which just Tuesday, like we saw so many people we had a partnership with univision and la bonita supermarkets we like registered more people than we registered like the entire program 
that day. Like, it's the outreach. It's meeting people where they're at. It's like, hey, I heard you on the radio. I knew you were going to be here. I'm only here to register to vote and I'm leaving. And it's like a quick process. And it is, like I said, the enthusiasm. So I really think that it's going to continue. And I think it's like when you talk to one person, that person is going to talk to somebody else. And if they might not reach out to that person, they're going to be like, oh, I can't believe this person bothered me with this. And then the next person is going to be like, but that's not a bother. And it's just like, it's just a never ending domino effect. Yeah. Yvette, please, I, I'm sorry to, to have cut you off before. No, uh, yeah. no, no, that's okay. I, I just wanted, wanted to uh, piggyback off of that um, conversation around um, registering to vote. And one of the things that we have seen, um, uh, there seems to be more interest in registering online, um, at least in our community. It's an easy process. People can do it right there while you're having a conversation. You can have them actually show them where the website is on their phone, and they can actually go through the process right then. But another thing is we get a lot of questions. I don't even know if I'm still registered or I moved or whatever. And so we're able to reconfirm right then on their phone uh, you know, that they are still registered or that, no, you're not in there anymore. You need to re-register to vote. Another big important voting block that I want to want to talk about, make sure we talk about today, so that Nevadans know that AB 431 was passed, uh, ratified in July uh, July 1st of 2019. There are 77,000 ex felons that can now vote, and so we're we've been really wanting to make sure that our community knows that because our community has been hard hit uh, with uh, mass incarceration, and so a lot of these things are not even you know are violations or uh, that, that um, uh, you know, marijuana possessions. So we want to make sure that uh, the community knows that they have an opportunity to vote. And there's nothing really they have to do other than just go register. And, uh, and so um, the, the process now, as far as where we are, we're still in our phase one with voter registration, but we're, we're already kicking off our phase two, get out the vote because ballots are expected. And so we want to make sure people know things like you have to use blue or black ink. You can't use another color to fill that ballot out. It's void. Um, so you have to make sure when you sign, you know, it, it comes down to something as simple as what ink do you use? Um, how you sign your signature. Don't get fancy. Don't be, you know, don't just do your little squiggly at the grocery store. Sign it like you normally would sign your check. You know, if you were right, signing a check so that your signature is, more likely to match what's on file. So those little tips and things like that, we're, we're trying to educate our community on that. This ballot looks completely different. It's a two page ballot, double sided. You need to turn it over. You need to flip it over. You need to need to fill out both pages. So there's a lot involved in, in trying to inform and educate the community. We have a lot of information on our website at ccblackcaucus.com to try to help our community go to kind of a one place instead of trying. Sometimes our governmental agencies, their websites are complicated or are, are difficult to navigate. People don't quite know where to go to find the information they're looking for. So we tried to put everything condensed, one little click of a button, and that information is all there, including those those sites that they can go and drop their ballots off. So and, I think it's and, uh, just, just understanding that things have shifted uh, and how voters vote. And, and as you mentioned, Yvette, and, and I want to go to Eric, Eric on this, uh, you know, the, the, the ballot itself has changed. Um, and, and you mentioned a lot of resources on your website. I also wanted to talk about uh, in-person support you can get in guidance, Eric. If, you, if you're looking at your ballot and you've got questions or something's confusing, can you reach out to an, an organization like the Asian Community Development Council and get some guidance on exactly how to fill out that, that ballot, the, the, the actual process of filling out that ballot? Yes, and for us as a 501c3 nonpartisan organization, we aim to serve all communities, uh, and especially this time, we partner with the National Asian American Advancing Justice and APIA Vote. So we have a national hotline, one eight 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 API Vote, B O T E. So that's one eight 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 two seven four a six eight three, and it provides seven to eight different uh, Asian languages. And we are one of the local partners. So if Nevadans call, we will make sure we have uh, a staffer or volunteer translate. And for Asian Community Development Council, our staffer speaks from Tagalog, uh, Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese, Thai to Arabic. So I think that's the resources we can provide 
and uh, very excited to see that because of the last census, Clark County right now have Tagalog ballots. And right now we're seeing Tagalog uh, sample ballots and uh, also different explanation of the ballot questions and different candidates that we have. Maria, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about uh, and ask you just some of the public concerns that have come up here, especially in the Latinx community. Uh, there's been concerns on the mail and ballot side that there might be uncounted ballots here. Um, are you seeing that in Nevada and why is this such a concern in the Latinx community? I have heard from a couple of folks uh, who have stopped by the office as well and saying like, you know, like, how do I ensure that my vote is counted? Like, how do I ensure that my vote won't be rejected? So like, it's also like providing those resources, like being like providing that education. And we constantly host Facebook lives. Unfortunately, like we can't have big town hall events just yet, which is so sad. It makes me so sad. But we do have like Facebook events. We do also have a national hotline that's also that's paired with Univision. So our national hotline, where folks have been reaching out, like, how do I register to vote? How do I fill this out? Like, you know, and sometimes it's just that reassurance that the Latinx community needs. And it's just like, you know, if you fill out your ballot correctly, like if you sign it once again with blue or black ink and you use the signature you're supposed to, like there should be no reason for your ballot not to be counted. So it's that reassurance and like, it's a relief that the community feels when someone's reassuring them, especially in that issue. Um, so a lot of, of like our hotline where a lot of folks can call and we do have Spanish speakers, Spanish uh, bilingual, Spanish and English speakers. Uh, the hotline is one eight three three votamos So it's one eight three three eight six eight two six six seven. 8668 Like I said, it's a national hotline. So wherever like folks need help, like that is a hotline where people have been calling, especially for help on how to register online. Um, but now it's like, how do I pull out a sample ballot online like I don't even know how to use Google and like I said it's the elder community that usually needs that reassurance and one and, of the know, things I, we've done too Kip is we oh, have sorry, we came that. up uh, sorry, we um, actually developed a one pager that walks you through the steps how to vote and we put things down there like using the blue and black ink and all of that and and uh, website links and things like that and so it's a one pager just a quick, and it's on our website, so it's right there, so people can download it if they want. But we're doing a lot of, we're finding that we're doing a lot of uh, more of uh, emailing, t uh, texting, and phones. I mean, we've just gone back to um, those grass, those original grassroots, roots, uh, grassroots methods <laughs> that we, uh, you know, that we started with back when we, when we, um, uh, when we chartered back in 2007. So. <laughs> And you, vet, you mentioned grassroots, and of course the grassroots uh, election uh, process, of course, is to, to go uh, to the polling stations on election day and vote. And of course, we're in a completely different world here. I wanted to go around the table and talk about that here on the different diverse options you have to vote. What you're hearing from your members on who, uh, you, kind of what the primary voting type is going to be here. We've already talked about mail-in. Uh, let's talk about early voting maybe and let's talk about polling on november 3rd of that uh, are you hearing a lot from the black community that um the, the number one primary option that's probably going to be employed is the mail-in or do you think your lot are going to be standing in lines uh on election day and in early voting i i think that we're going to have a lot of folks who are going to mail in their ballot because it's convenient for them and we encourage that the the end of the day the important thing is to go vote however you want to vote just go and vote. But please pull out our little one page cheat sheet and make sure you follow those little steps. It's, it's four easy steps to make sure that you do this properly. Now, if you decide that you want to drop off your ballot, which is what we're recommending as the number one option is to drop off your ballot, you can do that at your convenience and you don't have to stand in line. You, you, skip the line you go right up to the front and you let them know that you're dropping off your ballot and they're going to allow you to drop your ballot off and then you leave what i what we're trying to suggest to everyone if you're going to enter or go into a site to drop off your ballot or if you choose to stand in line or and hopefully there won't be any be many lines we do have a robust uh list of sites to vote in person um we are suggesting that of course you have to wear a mask that's required but we're also suggesting that you put on some gloves. Wear, wear some gloves so that you don't have to worry about touching anything. 
and then that way you can carry your ballot in. They're getting a ballot that, of course, you're using your glove to give it to them. And then also, you know, you feel more protected having the gloves on. I also want to just give a shout out to Commissioner Weekly. We're actually supporting him. He's having an event called Drop It Like It's Hot, and it's on the 17th. And uh, you can just drive. It's a drive-by ba- drop-off. And, and so that's kind of a get-out-the-vote event. But you're driving by and you're dropping your ballot off. And that will be at the um, uh, Elections Department in North Las Vegas on Saturday the 17th uh, from 9 to 12 noon. So I just wanted to give that shout-out. Some of the things that uh, we're supporting um, or are doing in the, in the community. We also have a candidate meet-and-greet uh, next week. Um, Wednesday uh, at 5 p.m. and that's virtual and you can get that information again on our website at ccblackcaucus.com. And drop it like it's hot. You mentioned 1017, the first day of early voting. A perfect segue. We've already talked about this quite a bit already on what is important as far as information that every voter needs right now. Eric, I wanted to go to you. Uh, Give us some critical deadlines both on the registration side here. Uh, When can we still register to vote? How can we still register to vote? And what's the most important information on the voting side that we need to know here? So I think Yvette already mentioned AB 431 that's passed during the last legislature, uh, legislative session that now, as long as people are not behind bars, uh, they are able to register to vote. Another big milestone from the last legislative session is now we have same day voter registration. So although the register by mail or in person deadline has passed you can still register online until the 15th october 15th and still get a mail-in ballot so that's october 15th and then next you can register to vote at the early vote site and also on election day so i think this is a a big milestone for clark uh, county and for the entire state i think this is something that we know it's voting rights not voting privilege so i'm glad that our elected officials are trying to make it as easy as possible. So October 15th, you can still register online and get that mail-in ballot. And then after that, you can still go in person and register to vote all the way until election day. But for uh, my recommendation, especially we work with youth a lot, uh, with the college kids and tell them, don't procrastinate. Uh, get it, make sure you register to vote as early as possible and make sure there's so many different options and put your uh, ballot in as early as possible as well. And you mentioned and, and the youth one vote. big and one. I'm sorry, Yvette. One please big, go ahead. One big important thing to remember: if you are going to register on site, you must take with you a driver's license or some valid um, uh, um, governmental issued ID with your picture on it. Otherwise, you will not be able to register. Uh, yeah. You're a first-time mm-hmm. voter, and that and you're required to to prove who you are. After you've registered, then you are not required to show any other ID whenever you go and and cast your ballot to vote. So I I just wanted to say that because that's real important. We'd hate for people to show up and then they they don't have a ID with them. Yeah, great point, Mm -hmm. great point. Uh, I I wanted to go to Maria. Uh, Eric mentioned the young vote. I wanna talk about the Latinx community here and the young vote as well. Across the board, youth are underrepresented 18 to 26 uh, is the most underrepresented voting population we have. Uh, you know, an organization like Me Familia Vota, how are you trying to get the young vote out uh, to register and to vote on, on voting day? Yeah, uh, so I think something that is, I know actually, something that we've been doing a lot of is we're having those conversations with them. We're having weekly check-ins with them. Um, our voter registration organizer actually started uh, a group called Hashtag you Vote Matters. Uh, she started at this at the beginning of the pandemic and we released a couple of videos at the beginning uh, of the pandemic. Talk, the youth was talking about why they're registered to vote, why they're going to be voting and why it's important for the youth vote, for the youth to vote. Um, and we've just been engaging with them. We've had panels with them uh, at the end because we did about, I believe, six videos. At the end of the six videos, we uh, it was called our series. At the end of our series, we did a Facebook Live that actually got a lot of views, got a lot of shares, a lot of likes. Like, And and it is the youth that is motivating also the older community to do it. And we've received those messages, like, you know, like young people registering to vote, young people telling me why for them it's important to vote. And they're bringing up different issues, you know, like from immigration to education to environment to like just 
because it's their right to vote. Like Eric said, it is voters' rights, not voters' privilege. And we have definitely seen that in the Latinx community, but especially in our youth. Um, I Like me, myself, I'm not too far away from the range that you said. I'm not going to say my age, but I'm not too far from the uh, range that you said. So it, like seeing this and like being able to talk to people who are my age. And unfortunately, I can't vote because I am undocumented, but being able to see like folks who are eligible to vote, they'd be like, dang, this girl, she's undocumented and she's still trying to get me to vote. And I'm like, yes, I am. So, you know, and it's also talk to them in a language that they understand and a language that they feel comfortable with. And, and it's about like, once again, like voter accessibility. So how are we giving them the information in a way that they understand without using like big words? Cause sometimes big words be confusing me too. And I work in this field. Like I, it's my job to know this and to know the language but also making it, like I said, making it accessible. Um, and just to touch base real quick on AB 431, like making that also in Spanish. Like we are very dedicated to translating everything, every information that we have to make sure that they also have it because it's also the youth that is going to be telling their parents, their grandparents, why it's important for them to vote. And a lot of their parents and grandparents speak Spanish. So having that information in Spanish for them is also like really important to them. Thank you for joining us this week on Nevada Week. Now, for more information about this year's election, please visit our website, vegaspbs.org slash Nevada-Week. You can also always find us on social media at Nevada Week. <laughs>